Good morning. Welcome to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on this Monday in the fourth week of Easter. This morning's Mass intention is for Tony Rosselli, requested by Mary Kelly and family. Let us begin with the entrance antiphon. Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us open our hearts and minds, acknowledging, acknowledging our sin as we call upon the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the Paschal mysteries on earth, Bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full measure of your grace for ages unending. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him saying, you entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. But I said, certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, a voice from heaven answered, what God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was drawn up again into the sky. <clears throat> Just then, three men, men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, send someone to Joppa and summon Simon, who is called Peter who will speak words to you by which you and your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us, when he came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? 
When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles, too. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> A thirst is my soul for the living God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. As the hind longs for running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul. Alleluia, alleluia. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, into your dwelling place. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf catches and scatters them. <clears throat> this is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. We need others in our life. We need witnesses to show us the way. As the reading from the Acts of the Apostles started out, it seemed like things were not going to go well. But as we persevered through the reading, we find that ultimately the truth made its way through. And through what? It, it made its way through people that had come to believe in the way, okay? They had come to believe in Jesus as savior of the world. They happened to be the Jewish converts that had come to believe. And with that, you know, we have a couple thousand years to look back on this and put things into perspective. And we would think that, my goodness, you, you, you're very close to the whole Jesus event and his resurrection, and you have decided to be baptized, and you're going to live this faith. And um, with that should come deep understanding, right? But no, their humanity got in the way. Wait a second, why are you, uh, wh listen, we believe it's those other ones you know, the Gentiles, they don't have any right 
They don't have any. We're the special ones. Even today, I think sometimes we get that way. I remember being a little kid and, um, you know, talking about faith and uh, my grandparents basically saying, you know, all the Catholics are in heaven. The rest of them, eh. You know, actually, Father uh, Bishop Barron, who, uh, you know, he has his video talks and everything, that was his topic this weekend was about God's word and God's salvation that goes out to all. We're not in charge of figuring out who's going to heaven and who's not going to heaven. God's word goes out in love. <laughs> to all. And we have to understand that. You know, the, um, I'm sorry, I got a little distracted. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep and they know me, we, we can understand that. But there's a line in the gospel today, and yesterday it was the same reading, that kind of slips by us if we're not careful. I don't know whether you heard it or not, but he says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. Did you catch that as we went through? I have other sheep that don't belong to the in-group here that I know that you're all thinking about right here. He says there's more because my message goes out to all. Our creation, God's creation, is all part of the loving embrace of God. My friends, what does that all mean to us? And I guess it's, it's as simple as this. It's a great big world that God created, that God loved into existence. We're a part of that and a very important part of it. And the best return that we can make to God is to be a loving presence in this world so that we could be like Peter there in Jaffa as his witness brought people out of the darkness of their misunderstanding and their selfishness to the point to where they could see and embrace the fact that the Gentiles too might have an opportunity to be saved. By the way that we live and love, by the way that we experience this world with those around us, will make all the difference. When they see the good that is in us, then the message of Christ becomes attractive. Then the message of Christ can massage those stiff necks and soften those hardened hearts so that they might be able to see and to believe that Jesus Christ is the good shepherd who comes to lead his flock home. Amen. Let us pray. That the church may grow in holiness and grace through the work of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. That all political leaders may be led by the Lord's teachings in all their decision making, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That victims of human trafficking may find in the church both liberation and healing, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For all those victims of natural disasters and accidents, that they might find peace for eternity through the love of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That homes in our faith community, the domestic church, may be havens for the most vulnerable of Christ's sheep, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For a deeper understanding of our faith, we pray to the Lord. 
that all who have fallen asleep in Christ may soon rest in the arms of the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. For all those special intentions that we carry with us in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. O God of gentleness and compassion, we present our needs to you, confident that you always hear us. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all in this time to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as together they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom, thy will be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. communion antiphon. Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Hallelujah. of spiritual communion. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, look with kindness upon your people and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. A prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God, entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust, and with you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Have a blessed day.